Today I wanted to tell you about a great technique that I've been incorporating in how I use Roam. It allows me to better manage my inboxes, stay on top of my writing, better I integrate ideas from what I read, and maintain connections with people. I'm talking about applying space repetition to manage how I interact with information, or to say it another way, to program my attention. So if you're wondering what is spaced repetition uh, by this point, uh, please take a look at the description um, of the video. I've attached some links and uh, especially linked to the video on how to use it with Rome Toolkit in Rome. So to start with, I'm going to talk about how I apply uh, spaced repetition to manage inboxes. And that's going to be like a foundational framework for other applications. So um, if I find something interesting, I usually uh, tend to put it in the inbox or if I have thought of doing something and I cannot deal with it right now, same. The problem is those is that they tend to overflow. So you add things at a higher rate than you can process them. Eventually, what happens for me is that I tend to designate a new inbox and pretend that the old one never happened which kind of defeats the purpose of having one. A space repetition uh, system provides a powerful way of fixing that. So what I do now is I put something interesting on the daily note and uh, I then um, add uh, scheduling metadata to by pressing a shortcut in RAM toolkit and it gets scheduled to be reviewed in the future. Now, the magic for this comes in when you do that review. So when you see an item pop up on your daily notes, you get two choices. You can handle it right now, and if you do that, it's great. Or you can press a shortcut and deal with it later. And the magic here is that you know that it's going to come up in the future. So you're not deleting it, you're not dropping it. And you don't have to think when would you have to schedule it because algorithm does it for you. At the same time, uh, spaced repetition evokes the power of exponential backup. So each time you reschedule something, it gets moved farther into the future. So if you reschedule something like a few times, um, eventually it's going to be effectively dropped because it's going to be very far in the future. But you didn't have to pay the emotional costs associated with dropping something. So let's take a look at a few examples. Um, I have two inbox items here. So one uh, is uh, looking at a cute puppy dog picture and I can handle that right now. So I can mark that as that. Um, and that's great. Now the other one I have is exploring Unison programming language. And that's probably not a great thing to do in the middle of video recording. So I'm going to say, I'm going to deal with this later. Now, um, let's take a look at a few other applications. Uh, one that is fairly similar in the conceptual framework is um, revisiting your evergreen nodes. So I have this node, asynchronous individual ideation is more effective um, when uh, done alone, then when done in the group. Now, uh, uh, there's this note and I can decide to add things to it, improve on it, interlink it with some other notes, and that would be great. Or I can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to deal with uh, this one later and I can reschedule it. Uh, another related application is reviewing the highlights from the books or articles I read. So there are a few um, applications for that. One is, um, so you made a highlight and you want to um, think about it and maybe then transform it into an evergreen note. Or um, upon review, you may decide to link it to some other note. Um, or you just review it and um, I guess incorporate the insight. And so when you review it, you can reschedule it further. 
Um, another great application um, you can do is using space repetition to uh, incorporate habits into your routine. So uh, example I have here is when I start a Pomodoro timer, I will close all my, all my messaging apps. And so when I see such a prompt, um, I will visualize myself uh, in the situation described and performing that action. Um, increasing probability that I'm actually going to do that um, in real life. Um, so again, uh, when I'm done with that prompt, I'm going to reschedule that. Uh, finally, um, Realm is a great personal CRM, and you can apply space repetition to remember follow up with people. So I have this prompt for maybe talking to John, and if I have um, some ideas on what to talk about with John at the moment, I can do that, and if not, I can say I'm going to deal with it later. Now, um, those were uh, some example applications, and I wanted to take a step back here a bit and talk about the general concept. So uh, what I'm talking about here is a concept called programmable attention, and it's best articulated by Andy Matushak. Uh, in his digital garden. So if you want to know more, you definitely should read up on that. Now, in the short version is, it's basically using computers to effectively manage your attention. So you already do that with the simpler forms of programmable attention, uh, like you snooze things in the inboxes or uh, you use bots that remind you of things. So you can think of this as a crown for your mind. Space repetition is basically attention managers on steroids. So you can easily um, use them to uh, schedule when do you have to interact uh, with a particular piece of information. So I find this very powerful um, and I incorporate uh, it in my own usage extensively. I hope you will find it useful as well.